All right, so today we're gonna to be reviewing some of your resumes. I've been getting a lot of resume requests on the Discord server, so I decided to make a video out of it. A lot of you guys have been sending over your resume on Discord to be reviewed, and some of you even consented to be on YouTube, so that's all I'll be doing today. For those of you who are new here, hi, welcome. My name is Ranesh, and I'm a data scientist currently working at a tech startup. I'm not a recruiter or a hiring expert by any means. However, I have hired and interviewed a lot of different people. That means I've had to look at a bunch of different resumes, so I kinda of know which ones tend to work and which ones don't. I've also done my fair share of job search so I kind of understand how the market works and what they look for in a resume. I plan on making an in-depth video in the near future on the importance of a good resume and why it matters. In this video though, I want to focus on some of your resumes and give you my feedback. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so I'm going to start with this resume right here. Uh, overall, the format looks pretty good in my opinion. I think it's full. Uh, and I love that it's separated and clear. There's a lot of line spacing. However, I would consider adding dividers uh, just so you can clearly see which section belongs where right now it's kind of merged into one uh, So yeah dividers would be my recommendation in terms of formatting, you know, since they're a student It looks like uh, they prioritize their education section with at the top, which is fine uh, I love how they added an award section which to me is just another way you can stand out uh, From the competition and here it looks like they got second place at a Deloitte competition, which is pretty impressive uh, Dean's list stuff is pretty regular. A lot of people tend to add Dean's list or President's list on their resume. However, this Deloitte uh, competition, that's pretty impressive to me. Generally, I do not recommend putting in your CGPA if it's below a 3.8. However, since you're an honor student, I think that makes sense. This is interesting. I haven't really seen many resumes that start off with the project section over experience. However, I kind of understand it. It looks like your projects are a lot more interesting. You tend to talk about them more. So maybe you're more passionate about them or you can talk about them more. Uh, so yeah, that's totally fine with me. Personally, I prefer, or I'm most interested in this e-commerce project just because uh, from a corporate perspective, having e-commerce knowledge or understanding is very lucrative just because a lot of startups like that, uh, you, it kind of means you have some domain expertise and that's in that niche. So uh, totally love this, uh, this project right here. I also noticed that there's a lot of keywords here that it's kind of hard to isolate. So like CNNs or quantitative uh, KPIs and stuff like that. I personally recommend bolding those areas or even italicizing it if you don't want it to get too bolded. Uh, those are pretty commonly used techniques. I do appreciate that they're using the XYZ format. That tends to be the best uh, format when it comes to writing your bullet points, just because it's more clear. Uh, you can demonstrate your impact in a much more, uh, I guess, simple manner. Uh, I think there's been a study on how long or where recruiters uh, spend on looking at a resume and I think it's like about six seconds and they clearly focus more on the numbers. So yeah, that definitely works. And then in the experience section, it looks like they have three experience points, uh, each having two bullet points, which is pretty good. I do want to point out something though. I, I think uh, these two experience on the bottom here are club experiences, which could mean they're unpaid, which I love. A lot of students tend to struggle with putting experience on their resume just because they don't really have any relevant experience. And I know a lot of companies are looking for experience prior to hiring someone. So it's almost impossible to get a job. Uh, so you have to come up with creative ways like this, maybe volunteering or even doing unpaid internships or starting your own club or participating in a club, uh, which clearly this guy demonstrated. Uh, and I think it's amazing. Now having teaching experience is obviously valuable. Uh, however, I think this is probably your strongest experience. So maybe evaluate or add more bullet points, talk about it more, uh, demonstrate some machine learning concepts, concepts that you thought not just uh, highlight the broader topic. A lot of companies look for uh, specific concepts. Maybe they're looking for forecasting. Maybe they're looking for clustering. Maybe they're looking for deep, deep learning or, you know, image analysis and stuff like that. So maybe talk about what you did more in depth. And then they also have voluntary experience here. So it's pretty rare for me to see three different sections where it's pretty, uh, I guess, evenly distributed. Usually the experience section or the project sec section is, uh, is more skewed or more distributed, has more weight. Uh, so yeah, this is interesting to me. I do appreciate that they listed out the dollar amount that they raised. Obviously a lot of corporate companies uh, have a bottom line that is related to dollars saved or dollars raised. So this is definitely gonna be attractive to any corporate company uh, who's looking to hire you. The skill section looks pretty basic to me. Uh, I would probably try to merge the languages and libraries. So what I do in my personal resume, I put in Python and then I have like a parentheses with all the libraries like Pandas, NumPy, whatnot. Same with R, SQL. I also add uh, engineering languages, front-end languages, Reacts, other frameworks and stuff like that that I'm comfortable with just so they know and understand that I can do both uh, some engineering, some software engineering work and also a lot of data work. So that's just a recommendation. In terms of tools, I, I notice a lot of people put um, these tools on their resume. GitHub and Git makes sense. VS Code to me, it's just an IDE, doesn't really matter. 
however, if it's in the job description, yeah, that makes sense to put it there. So if you notice that VS Code and Jupyter Notebooks are in the job description pretty frequently, then yes, it makes sense to me to put it on your resume. And then certifications, looks like you have a couple good certifications here. Um, the only recommendation I have is to maybe hyperlink them if you think that's gonna be valuable. Uh, it could add visual proof to the skills uh, which can validate your knowledge. So yeah, that's my only recommendation. Overall, I'm gonna rate this an eight out of 10 for formatting, uh, a nine out of 10 for content, and also a seven or eight out of 10 for readability. I think it's eight out of 10. If you added the dividers and maybe the, the italics or bolds uh, and the KPIs, I think it'd go up to a nine or a 10 out of 10. So this is a pretty great resume to start off. I'm not gonna mention their name. I think I've blurred it out on the resume too. Uh, but yeah, great start. All right, so the next resume I'm looking at Slightly different format. Uh, it looks like this person's from India. I personally don't really have any experience in terms of uh, job hunting or even understanding how the market works at India, but I can give my uh, my personal you know feedback for this resume. So I'm gonna start off with the education section. Uh, the CGPA system is a little different, but if this equates to anything above a 3.8 in the 4.0 system uh, that we have here in the US, then yeah, I'll keep it on. And honestly, from like a initial glance, it looks like there's not really any bolding except for down here. Uh, I don't understand why this section has blue uh, headers, whereas this section does not. So maybe maybe that's just a personal choice they made, but I would consider making it more systematic, more structured, more consistent. Uh, but yeah, focusing on the education section, the dollar amount here is great. Uh, you know, most companies love seeing revenue amounts. So this is great. However, I think Maybe government scholarship isn't the most attractive wording. I would try to make it more relatable instead of just government scholarship, make it more meaningful, I guess. Relevant coursework is always good to have for students. However, I think I, maybe it's just me, but is the font size different for these two? I could be completely wrong here, but it would be great to maybe bold this so that there's more distinction. Uh, there's a lot of courses that you added. I would try to you know, keep it to like three, four max, highlight the most important ones because this can get very lengthy. Uh, but yeah, it looks like a lot of good courses that you took, a lot of, uh, I guess, unique courses that I've never seen before. Ethical hacking is one of them. But yeah, totally on board with the, the courses. Uh, certifications wise, these are some good cert certifications. I think this is Andrew Ung's or uh, Stanford's. Not sure where this one is from or this one. Uh, personally, when I'm reviewing resumes, I like to click into the hyperlinks, especially for certifications and uh, projects, just because I know a lot of people put certifications, sometimes they don't have those certifications. So adding that visual proof, that validation is great, especially if you want to just showcase the hard work that you've put into getting a certification. So that would be my recommendation there. Now moving on to the experience section, uh, it looks like they're using the XYZ format, which is great. However, I'm not sure why the formatting is a little weird. It looks like there's a space here. Could just be the, uh, I guess the PDF they sent me because it looks like down here, there's a little bit of uh, text bleeding to the, I guess the outskirts of the page too. So could just be with the format that they sent me or the PDF that they sent me. It could be a faulty PDF. However, uh, I like the XYZ. I like the line spacing. I would add, you know, bold, Bold, uh, bold text on the KPIs or some of the keywords, even italicizing some of the numbers, that would be great. Yeah, these are these are definitely relevant uh, relevant content to have for a data analyst or data scientist. Python SQL, uh, A-B testing, Python scripts, that's good. Yeah, I, I, I like the experience a lot, I think it's pretty strong. Uh, the project section, again, the blue words, I'm not sure, I like the blue words, but I think to keep it consistent, you either have to make this blue or just remove, remove the blue uh, text altogether. I like I really like how you link the project here. That's very good for validation and verification. However, uh, it does seem like there's a lot of clutter up here for these two projects, and the bottom one is pretty easy to read. Uh, I would try to distribute the text evenly for all. So if you have like four bullet points, try to keep them all four. And if, if it's like, I guess, taking two lines for each point, try to keep it the same. So this, is, this looks kind of like an outlier, which is not visually pleasing. Uh, but to focus on these points out here, I think these points could either be condensed into one sentence or I guess made to two points because stuff like this is just not, not really easy to read or it's not really typical for a resume in my opinion. But yeah, stuff like this, I think this should be three words instead of one. Uh, not, to nit or not, not to nitpick, but yeah, all those little grammar mistakes can really be uh, painful when it comes to uh, recruiter reading your resume because obviously you don't want to you don't get passed on for the job just because you forgot a, a period or you misspelled a word so 
checking, uh, checking your grammar, checking your spelling, uh, and your formatting is really important, especially when it comes to making a good resume. Another thing I want to point out is the tenses here are kind of weird. So like past tense to present tense to, yeah, I, I just think you should stick to a specific tense uh, unless you're currently doing the work. If it's if you're presently doing the work, then stick to present tense. But most, most resumes are always in past tense. And then for the skill section, yeah, this is what I was talking about. Uh, you know, list the languages and the libraries together. This is kind of similar to what I have. Maybe bold the skill section or the headers. That might help with the separation. But yeah, this is a pretty good skill section right here. Uh, I am kind of confused why this is here. You already have a certification section on the top. So maybe this is a different type of certification. Maybe it's not a course. It's just one of those certifications that uh, you paid to take a test and you got certified in. Uh, if that's the case, I still would lump it up with above one just to reduce confusion. Uh, and maybe even link it to, but otherwise this looks pretty good. Overall for the format, I would give this a seven out of 10. For the content, I would give it like a eight or nine out of 10. I think you could improve the content, especially the wording. Uh, and then for readability, I think I'd go for a five or a six out of 10. Um, obviously maybe it's a different country, so the, the standards are different, but here in America, I, can, I could confidently say uh, you would get knocked a lot of points because of the, the format and the, the grammar. So. Try to improve on those aspects. Otherwise, I think you did a great job. All right, for the last resume we're gonna review today, uh, looks like this one is also from India. Uh, a lot more or a lot less content. However, I do like the format. There's a lot of space, which makes it very easy to read. I do think it could benefit from a lot more content. It looks like the projects is the main, uh, main selling point here. Uh, so yeah, I do understand a lot of students have it difficult or have, have a hard time finding ways to fill out their resume because one, there may be freshmen that don't really have any relevant courses or, or projects, but you know, you can always do that on the side. You can always, if you're looking to land a job, if you're looking to build or improve your resume, you should always be prioritizing uh, work and experience that you can put on your resume. And that doesn't have to be for an employer. It could always be self-employed. You can always be projects, open source comp contributions, competitions like hackathons and stuff like that. So just try to be creative. Uh, like that first resume we saw, try to be creative and you know maybe volunteer at a club or nonprofit and stuff like that, just so you can boost up uh, your resume. Uh, I think dividers here would be great too, like maybe for the education projects and, and courses or skills section, just to have more separation. I know it's a team, but separation is really good. It makes uh, the recruiter's job a lot easier. Maybe they're just looking to see your experience. Maybe they're just looking to see your skills. They can easily pinpoint where those sections are with dividers. Hmm, this, so this resume, uh, the GPA scaling is a little weird, but uh, again, my feedback is if it's not in the top, maybe 5%, I wouldn't, 5, 10%, I wouldn't include it just because, you know, it's not really as impressive anymore. Uh, the format for these percentages or the font is a little weird to me. I would personally stick to just Helvetica or Times New Roman or Arial just because I think those are clear, really good fonts to use for, for resumes. Uh, but you know, there's always pre personal preferences. So maybe this might work in India. Um, I also noticed that uh, for the content, they don't really talk about it in the XYZ format. Like there's a exclamation mark here, which I find to be pretty odd. Generally, you want your bullet points to be structured in a way that is uh, easy for the recruiter to read. Each bullet point should have an impact that can kind of tell what you did uh, and the quantity of the impact or quantify the impact. That's obviously the best case. I know not a lot of people can do that. So, you know, a lot of people tend to automate processes, but they don't really track how much, you know, compensation they save in terms of man hours or even time they save. Like personally, uh, I notice a lot of people put automate on their resume, but they don't really track the time they saved automating. Maybe it was a manual process that took five hours a week or 10 hours a week. And now it's automated, sent to your email every day. Uh, that's like 10 hours a week saved by 10 people or 15 people. That's a lot of hours. That's a lot of money. So try to get creative in the ways you're marketing yourself. That's really important when it comes to creating your resume. These are these are pretty good projects in my opinion, like web scraping with beautiful soup. To me, that's pretty, pretty essential for a data scientist to have. So uh, that's a great skill. I know a lot of data scientists who don't have that skill. So, you know, that's a great skill to have. I think if you sold it better on your resume, word it a little better, maybe even linked the project, that would be great. Uh, but yeah, in terms of courses, I personally would stay away from putting Kaggle or LinkedIn courses on your resume. Uh, stick to certifications that have big names like Google, Meta, whatever or uh, very valuable skills that you can display because these courses can be kind of bland. Uh, so yeah, maybe look into taking Coursera certifications or, or other certifications like uh, IBMs or stuff like that. So yeah, if you're looking to gain some experience, I personally recommend hackathons, unpaid internships, uh, open source contributions and stuff like that. Those can really 
uh, set you apart from the competition and help you gain a lot of experience and even land your first paying job. Uh, it did help me. So yeah, just trying to spread the word. And then technical skills here, uh, pretty good in terms of data science skills, Python SQL is great, uh, tools, Git, VS Code, a lot of similar skills from the previous resumes. Uh, I would try to merge libraries with uh, the languages. What I would do here is instead of libraries, put techniques, maybe some machine learning techniques, some statistical techniques that you know, uh, some analysis techniques, that, that would be pretty interesting. I think that's more important than the libraries because everybody can, can Google how to use the syntax for a specific library, but not many people can learn how to or not many people know how to use a specific analysis technique or a machine learning model. Um, so yeah, that's just another recommendation. So I'm gonna rate this format uh, about a seven or eight out of 10. I would definitely change the font for these uh, sub points. I would also consider adding dividers and also XYZ format definitely for the, for the experience points. Uh, but yeah, aside from that, I like the format. It's very readable, a lot of space, pretty good. In terms of content, I would say like a six out of 10 just because it's it's pretty empty, it's like a half page. Uh, there's definitely a lot of room for improvement in terms of experience. You could do more projects, you could get more experience through volunteer work for you know your, your family, friends, uh, company or church, nonprofit, or even unpaid internships. Uh, definitely ways to improve there. And then in terms of readability, like I said before, just because of the XYZ format, it's kind of hard to read and I don't think it's in a format where a lot of recruiters would care to read. So. Definitely, definitely would change that if I could. All right, so another big concept that a lot of people miss is that when you're submitting your resume through a, for a job application, it's gonna be sent through an ATS portal for the most part. Uh, and these ATS portals parse your resume experience. And you might notice this when you're filling out a job form just because uh, you might notice that the uh, work experience isn't filled to the standard you're looking for or isn't filled exactly to how you fill it out in your resume. And that's because it's parsing your resume wrongly. Uh, I use this specific website to kind of understand how the resume is being parsed and obviously there's a lot of uh, you know skewing here because of the, the black box that I put in the top to dis not disclose their uh, information. However, uh, this resume looks pretty good in terms of uh, content. It looks like it's being parsed pretty relevant or pretty accurately. So I'm not too mad about that. However, the other two resumes, as you can see, it's a little bit sparse, right? There's a lot of information missing. There's a lot of duplicate information, which is not needed uh, and definitely could be improved. So yeah, the, the key concepts here, especially for uh, those of you who are looking to create a resume is one, make sure that the format is readable and definitely be sure to test it out with a platform like this so that you can confidently say that an ATS system can also read your resume, which is super important. And two, make sure you market yourself in a way where an employer would love to hire you. Don't market, you don't undersell yourself is basically what I'm trying to say. I've talked about some of these concepts in other videos, so definitely check them out. If you guys wanna see more of these videos, do leave a like down below and definitely leave a comment letting me know. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.